it's so important to get help it, because um, people tend to think that, and, and, and I, I understand why it happens, when you get overwhelmed with all of the psychological um, turmoil, just it feels like it's this weight that's on you and it can be very difficult to kind of pull yourself out of that and reach for the phone and ask for help. Chat over popcorn starts now. Let's talk about the unique challenges that even entrepreneurs could face in a marriage and, and why a lot of entrepreneurs end up divorcing. They do. Actually, the data is very dis discouraging that the, um, there are more divorces in families where there's entrepreneur business owners mm -hmm. than in like uh, non-business owner families. Right. Like, you know, so, they, so divorce is overrepresented, let's say that, in, in marriages where there's an entrepreneur. Yes. And it's because building a business is so hard. It's like having another child, but also right. having that child having to provide for the family. So it's like you have so much pressure mm -hmm. on the business mm -hmm. and building the business mm -hmm. uh, that it takes away mm -hmm. or could take away mm -hmm from the marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just because it is so stressful and it involves everything. Mm -hmm. It's like having a child, right. for sure, because you have to nurture and care for your business mm -hmm. and help it grow, just like we help our mm -hmm. children grow. But it also hits the fa the uh, money issue. It is. You know, you have to take loans. <laughs> you got to bring home then, money. Okay? Yes, you have to bring home money. And then you and then there's there could be a mismatch between um, the spouses who think, well, we should go get another loan or no, we need to be debt free. And then all just the money part of that, not even the money coming in, the revenue and the income, but just like, you know, how do we grow? Mm -hmm. And these are really challenging situations. And I've dealt with it for over 18 years and working with leaders and business owners and building their business because businesses get to a certain point in the natural lifetime of a business where you have to make some really, it, there's a, a risk involved Absolutely. where you grow to a point where you realize, okay, if we really want to continue growing, we're going to have to take a big risk here. We're going to either have to hire more people or mm -hmm. go get a loan or take the risk of, of opening a, a another new office. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All of these. And they're very scary moments in the right. life of an entrepreneur because the, because of the amount of risk involved. Mm -hmm. And if both partners are not aligned or at least closely aligned on how to manage that risk or how the two people together will again, negotiate how to handle those, mm -hmm. those key points along mm -hmm. the way, it can it can set the ground because then if 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 you decide oh I'm going to go out and, and get a loan and then you just do that and the other person's feelings are hurt because you didn't necessarily you know mm -hmm. take my feelings into consideration mm -hmm. and you know what about mm -hmm. this what about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and so it can get very very ugly very quickly mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs are autonomous individuals they yes. and they are really good at making decisions and they don't always consult somebody when they're making a decision so let's talk about how. Couples who find themselves married to um, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. can get through that marriage sound-mindedly. Right. So both people, this is where it's really important. Um, a couple has to have an identity outside of the business. Mm. Like, that is the, mo the most important kind of thing to think about. So if the um, couple, the only thing there is to talk about is it's the business, business <laughs> and the kids then then you're you're setting the groundwork for later on a really big problem mm -hmm. okay because eventually the business is going to start moving and you won't have to pay as much attention to it it's true. and then and then your kids are going to be grown and out of the house and you're kind of stuck with your your spouse mm -hmm. and you want to be able to like that person right. and have have things that are still in common between the two of you and i'll tell you what if i can give one message to the audience please 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 Pay attention to your marriage. Make it a top priority. Mm -hmm. More important than your business. Because if your business fails and your marriage fails, you've got a massive failure on your hands. Mm -hmm. If your business fails and your marriage is still there, the two of you can build something else together. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if the marriage is gone, then you've got yourself a, just a real catastrophe kind of building on your hand. Please make your marriage important. Even if you're listening to this, you're thinking, oh, I'm too busy with my business and my marriage is, is fine. Every, you know, we're, we're in a good place. There's a possibility that you, now you are, but a, a year from now, you know, so just please make your marriage a priority. Meaning, establish with your spouse an identity that is separate from your business and separate from your children. You two have to have things that are in common that aren't your business and your ch kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to like the other person, right? You know, it's true. Yeah, it really, yeah, it is true. And 
And there you're going to, in the normal flow of a marriage, you're going to go through ups and downs, and there are going to be times when it's harder to do that, and that's just the truth. Um, it's still going to be important that you both find your way back to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's okay if you're in a low point right now in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. Mm -hmm. It happens. I'm married 29 years. Okay, so I can speak with some authority here. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through ups and downs as long as during the down that you're both oriented towards figuring out eventually mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to find your way back. Mm -hmm. If you're both you know like we don't know we don't know how to do it right now but we're just committed to doing it mm -hmm. eventually you'll get there and mm -hmm. you get, I would encourage you also to get get therapy you know find right. a good marriage counselor find out your pastor who might be able to help you as well like it's so important to get help mm -hmm. because um, people tend to think that and, and, and I, I understand why it happens when you get overwhelmed with all of the psychological um, turmoil just it feels like it's this weight that's on you and it can be very difficult to kind of pull yourself out of that and reach for the phone and ask for help mm -hmm. but that is so important that people do that mm -hmm. because it, if you go through this alone it's just going to make it so much worse for everybody mm -hmm. if you try to keep things together in your own head and try to pretend to the world like everything's fine when it's not eventually you're going to break down. Mm -hmm. And you are talking about after the divorce have happened. Even right? during, during. During and yeah. after. I mean, at, at any point, really. I mean, yeah. anytime you're under any kind of emotional distress, you should mm -hmm. reach out for help. Mm -hmm. um, if we think that, if you think that it's only really affecting you and you, it's only in your own head, you're wrong. It's, um, I always say that our wounds bleed on other people. Mm -hmm. okay, so if you're going through something, at some point in time, other people are going to realize that you're just not on your A-game. You're right. not... Do, you're not showing up in mm -hmm. the way that you could or that mm -hmm. you have in the past. And then it start having effects on your career, yes. your finance, your social right. circle. It just yeah. because, cascades down. Because all that emotional turmoil takes a toll. It requires resources from you internally that then you can't devote to something else. Right. So if you are an entrepreneur, a business owner, now you have fewer resources to devote to your business as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. is a big deal. And it's very important that even, you know, if you're hearing my voice now and you're there and you're not reaching out for help, take this as a sign. It's time to pick up the phone and ask for help. Mm -hmm. So find a, a qualified, licensed mental health professional in your area who can walk with you through this. Go to your church. And if your pastor's not available, find out who that pastor would refer you to. Perhaps your mm -hmm. church has um, a counseling ministry that mm -hmm. you can go to and just get some support. Mm -hmm. um, no one, no one was meant to go through life alone. Right. And particularly challenging times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you wrote this book, mm -hmm. Be Still. Again, available on Amazon under Anita Mercasani, and her name would be in the video, so just so you can get a correct spelling. So, Dr. Anita, talk to us about how we can find practical strategies mm -hmm. to go through divorce. Yeah. Individuals who have gone through divorce, and if you have gone through divorce and you have your own special strategies that you use to cope through it we want to hear from you leave a comment you know we are going to hear from dr anita but i also want to hear from you from your personal experience with divorce and how you get through it because your story really could help somebody else so let's talk about be still you know the yeah. the practical solutions mm -hmm. that individuals who have gone through divorce can yeah. Cool. Um, the, so Be Still, the title of the book comes from Psalm 4610, in which God tells his people, and if you read actually the whole, all of Psalm 46, you'll find out that it, it is about God speaking to his people who are going through a very, very difficult time. He talks about the mountains are crumbling into the sea and the, and the, the cities, are the, the kingdoms are, are on fire. And during all of this tumultuous time, God tells his people, Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And so when God tells us to be still, what he's telling us is in these times of crisis, when you are in emotional turmoil and it feels like the internal mountains in your brain, like all the things that you could count on, everything is crumbling away and you feel like you don't know what to do. He gives you a very specific strategy and that is to be still. Now the trick is, how do you be still? And that is where it can be very hard because what God means when he says be still, 
he means that you are supposed to, when you look at the Hebrew word, actually, where this originally came from, what it was originally written in Hebrew, the word that he uses, that we translate in English as be still, means to, to surrender. Mm. And it means to stop striving. And that's tough, because when we're in a tough situation, we want, we want to fix it. Mm -hmm. We want to, you know, we're going to fix it. We're going to control this. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell this person, here's how to do this, and we're going to stand up for ourselves, and we're going to make this happen. And what God is telling us is, mm -mm. stop striving. Let me handle it. Exactly. Because honestly, there are situations that we are trying to control that we can't. Mm -hmm. And yet we still try. Mm -hmm. And that's called striving. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's different than like actually controlling things that we are supposed to control. Mm -hmm. um, we have limits though around us as human beings. And God is actually okay with those limits, by the way. Like he's the one who installed the limits in our lives. So he's just fine with the fact that we have limits. We seem to not be okay with the fact that we have limits right. and things that we're not supposed to be trying to control. So what he's telling us in Be Still, and the message here, is stop striving. Stop trying to control things that you don't have any authority to control. So the trick about being still is that it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is not our normal way of thinking mm -hmm. and the stuff that we go, that go through our heads. Mm -hmm. um, we're used to our minds being very busy, very just like, like almost the equivalent of a hurricane moving through our heads. And we're used to multitasking. We're used to just kind of boom, 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 boom. That is the opposite of stillness, of course. And so though we try to hand things over to the Lord and ask him to take them, take care of them for us, but then a couple hours later, we find ourselves thinking about it again, trying to manage it again, trying to control things again that we're not supposed to control. Mm -hmm. And so I always, my, my joke is that it's like we lend our problems to God. We don't mm -hmm. actually surrender them to him. Mm -hmm. We just say, here, hold this for a couple hours, and then we take it right back. <laughs> when God really wants us to hand over to, to surrender to him, complete things that we, to surrender. Complete surrender. So think about what it means to surrender. So when two armies are battling each other and one decides to surrender to the other, what they're doing is they're saying, I'm admitting you're more, this other army is more powerful. This mm -hmm. other entity is more powerful mm -hmm. than I am and I can't fight anymore. Yep. And surrender is permanent. <laughs> and I think just understanding that God, God doesn't hate people who are divorced and mm -hmm. so we shouldn't. Right. God's not rejecting people who are divorced mm -hmm. and so we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. That is not a a criteria to get into heaven by any stretch okay <laughs> mm -hmm. and that and that you know we we all have failure in different parts of our lives even if our marriage is successful there's other things that we have failed in mm -hmm. and and at mm -hmm. and so in terms of judging mm -hmm. we need to be really careful about mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. you know watch the before you take the speck out of your neighbor's eye, look right. at the plank in your right. own eye. Right. I mean, that's so hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So I think any time we are geared towards judging, mm -hmm. uh, we really, and, and I mean, God does tell us we can judge with righteous judgment, with his judgment, mm -hmm. but we're not supposed to be lack compassion in mm -hmm. it. And we're, and we're not, we're supposed mm -hmm. to judge rightly. Right. And judging someone because they were divorced, that is not a right judgment. Mm -hmm. And just be because asleep. somebody is married, that's not mean they are right. spiritually yes. not divorced, That's right? That's true. Somebody could be married, living in the same house, yeah. going about their business, wearing the rings, yeah. and both partners have checked out. Yes. So as a society, judging people who the rings are off, they have the label or the status yeah. divorce, does not really mean they have failed at life no. because not everyone who is married is happily married and not everyone who has the ring on is really spiritually still married to right. their spouse and people could be checked out. So this book is about how we can bring Jesus back into our mental health care and the importance of, of actually prioritizing your mental health. So what this does is I teach where emotional wounds come from, how they develop, uh, both psychologically and spiritually, the things that happen to us as kids, how it affects us as adults, and why we really need to make a priority out of healing, emotional healing, and how we functionally, practically, we can learn to rely on God to do this. And so I give in one chapter, there's 10 very specific strategies on how you can help yourself be still, how you can um, go through different, just like different strategies, different techniques to help wind your brain down 
so that you can get to that point of being still uh, before the Lord. And the goal is to be able to hear his word directly to your heart. So, and in doing so, it's, it's healing, like immediate. And I have seen it before my eyes mm -hmm. uh, when I've worked with people one-on-one -on -one, and I now do retreats and conferences where I teach people these things and then they have experiences. We have opportunities to go off and leaders are praying and they're coming back with just incredible stories of healing that happens like that. And it's, it's tremendous. Um, and so it's been a real honor to be able to work with all of these people along the way for the past three years or so. Mm -hmm. So please, you can find me too by on Facebook, Be Still with Dr. Anita. Mm -hmm. And I have a group actually, as well as a page. You can find me on Twitter at the handle at Real Dr. Anita. And I look forward to interacting with you on mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. So guys, you have been talking to Dr. Anita about divorce, the impact it has on people's wellness, and how people can ultimately heal emotionally if individuals have gone through divorce. And let us create a better society where we are helping everybody heal, but preaching the right way to heal, um, and which is exactly what this book is about. Uh, so go on Amazon and grab your copy. Uh, you are going to change your life. Maybe buy it as a gift for somebody. Mm -hmm. Leave comments. Let us hear from you on, on this topic. Because a lot of people, 39% of marriages end in divorce. My goodness, that, that is quite a high number. So again, we thank you for watching. And until next time, remember, our truths are best lived when we dare the moment. Take care. Thank you for watching this episode. To continue with the conversation, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell or notification button to be notified every time new videos get uploaded. Also, click thumbs up to like the video and follow our Instagram and Facebook pages to catch up on all the conversations.